G'day, Chris here and welcome back to ClickSpring. So on first impression, the straight line engine would appear to be a fairly simple machine. And in a way it is. It has an open and readily interpreted mechanical design. And it's all manually controlled. There's no electrical power or motor involved, just a hand cranked assembly of slides, pulleys and counterweights, arranged to move the workpiece against a stationary cutting tool. The most basic form of motion that it generates is of course a straight line. But the machine is better known for the variation to the basic straight cut that can be generated by engaging a touch piece with a fixed pattern bar. This in turn oscillates the workpiece from side to side to superimpose the pattern onto the cut. And the pattern bar can be shifted up or down or phased between the cuts to generate interesting pattern development over a repeated series of lines. The cut sequence can progress either horizontally or radially using various ratchet, pawl and detent mechanism that ensure uniform interval steps. And the patterns more often than not are cut with the intention that they generate a pleasing textured or optical effect, which of course is part of the great appeal of this sort of machine engraving. And it's in the close inspection of these patterns where it becomes clear that despite their apparent simplicity, both the straight line engine and its companion the Rose engine are in fact machines of subtle complexity. A lot of factors, like for example the step over and phase intervals, must interact flawlessly in order to get a good result. And so operating the machines well becomes about carefully managing a lot of small details, one of which is a consistent and repeatable depth of cut. Now I'll go through both cutter and guide geometry in later videos because they each play a key role in this too. But briefly, what we would normally consider to be flat sheet stock is often not really very flat. So even when trued as best as possible in the chuck, there might still be an unavoidable curve to the stock itself. If we were to operate our cutting tool from a fixed absolute depth relative to this workpiece, we'd get quite a difference in depth of cut across that surface. And it would easily be seen as a flaw in the resulting work. So the machine has what's known as a guide adjacent to the cutter to solve this problem. The guide shape will vary depending on the shape of the workpiece. But one common feature is a smooth polished surface that touches the region just to the right hand side of the cutter to get a local depth reference. The operator retracts the guide the tiniest amount so that the cutter extends beyond that reference. And that extension of the cutting edge beyond the guide naturally sets the depth of cut. Now an interesting consequence of the wide angle of the cutter geometry is that the depth of cut has a large effect on the cut width. There's barely a hint of cutter advancement between each of these four passes. Also, despite the fact that the guide makes rigid contact with the work surface, there's still some capacity for a small but quite detectable amount of flex and compression in the whole arrangement. This permits the finest variations in cut depth and so also width and cut quality, depending on the operator hand pressure. On occasion, it might even be preferable to simply retract the guide altogether. The slide assembly can be radially positioned as required to ensure that the cutter remains tangential to the work which means we could just as easily have the cutter and guide travelling over a curved surface as we would a flat surface. And in fact that's exactly what these machines are designed to do. Depending on what the workpiece requires, the operator combines the constrained motion inherent to the machine with careful control of the cutting tool pressure and orientation to achieve bright, consistent and repeatable cuts. Now 
Now all of this works fine, right up until we lose the adjacent reference surface over which to run the guide. It might be that we've completely cut that surface away, leaving peaks below the original surface as part of the pattern formation. In this case, the lower reference would lead to a discontinuity in the cuts as the guide drops to that lower level. Or it might be that we'd prefer to avoid running the so-called black mark over a pristine surface. One way an experienced operator might solve the problem is by carefully managing the pressure on the cutting tool without any guide at all, relying on eye and experience alone to completely freehand the cut. But another option to consider is a depth stop. It's an add-on for the machine, the construction of which I've covered in a separate video. And it's a fairly simple tool to operate that permits the setting of a cut depth independently of the workpiece. Now the tool comes with a few caveats for its use. Because of the stock variability that I mentioned previously, it needs to be used fairly judiciously and often over a limited range of the work surface. Fortunately, this is also where it's most useful. Like for example, when finishing off the last few cuts of a radial pattern, where the guide will lose its reference. The way it's used will vary according to each operator and the situation but I've found it convenient to engage the stop as close as possible to the point of losing the reference surface and whilst gently resting the cutter inside the most recent cut. If it suits the circumstances, at this point the standard guide can be retracted. The actual cutting happens under pressure, so I've found it helps to set the stop slightly high to leave the cutter just clear of the most recent cut. And to then very carefully descend the tool until it just starts to graze the surface when under the usual operating pressure, with the objective being to achieve as close a match as possible between the two mechanical methods of setting the cut depth. Once all looks as it should, the cuts can proceed as normal. And if all has gone well, the final few cuts should be a close match to those on either side. So whether by freehand, with a depth stop, or by using the standard guide, being able to maintain consistent control over the depth of cut permits other settings of the machine to be used to great visual effect on all sorts of objects, materials and surfaces. And this allows an almost unlimited range of patterns to be generated, to catch the light, cast shadow, and otherwise display the distinctive visual qualities of work created on the straight line engine. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.